Chapter 5, Adlerian Theory Alfred Adler founded individual psychology, a social theory widely applied by counselors. His theory is used for understanding individual psychological state and connectedness to their social interest, which is an indicator of psychological health. Adler recognized the contentious world that humans live in and the many social justice issues that they face. He viewed human behavior as goal-oriented and purposeful. Humans are directed toward living cooperatively and contributing to social interest. A person is holistic and functions as a whole, a unified and unique organism in all its aspects. Adler believed that psychopathology is not only treatable but also preventable. His aim was philosophy of his aim was a philosophy of living that produces a democratic family atmosphere and a healthy social interest. His theory is reflected in common counseling terms such as birth order, family constellation, lifestyle, inferiority, early recollections, and fictions. Adler's work influenced important people, including Albert Ellis, Viktor Frankl, Abraham Maslow, and Rollo May. His ideas include core ingredients of many approaches, such as cognitive behavioral, family, extens- family existential, phenomenological, schema, humanistic, and person-centered. Background. Adler began his professional career as an Austrian physician and psychiatrist. Born in Vienna on February 7, 1870, he was the second son of six children of a Jewish grain merchant family. When he was a child, illnesses left him weak and sickly, although he was very socially outgoing. In college, his peers included socialist students, among whom was Raja Epstein, who later became his wife. They had four children. Two of his children, Alexandra and Kurt, became psychiatrists in the United States and promoted Adler's theory. In 1898, at age 28, Adler wrote one of his first works on the health of tailors because of the poor economic and medical conditions of this population, in which he described one of the main ideas in his theory that the individual is part of an integrated whole in the environment. Adler published several more works that featured a form of social theory counter to Freud's deterministic theory. Adler was vehemently against the marginalization of minority groups. He believed in equality of women, races, ethnic groups, and religions, and promoted the idea of equality between the client and the counselor, moving the counselor's analysis from the couch to two chairs. Early on, a rivalry developed between Adler and Freud, and eventually Adler's direction to a more social theory caused a rift with Freud. In 1907, Adler published The Study of Organ Inferiority and Its Physical Compensation, which was the focus of his early work on organ disabilities and compensatory responses of individuals. The Neurotic Constitution, published five years later, included the main constructs of his theory. Eventually, Adler's theory became more of an educational than a medical model. His book, Understanding Human Nature, contained many of his lectures given at the Viennese Institute for Adult Education. He was influenced by philosophers such as Immanuel Kant and Friedrich Nietzsche. Adler believed that the drives for power and superiority contribute to human behavior by compensating for a sense of inferiority complex. In 1914, Adler started the journal The Individual Psychologist, and he edited a book, Healing and Education, Medical Educational Papers of the Society for Individual Psychology. When Adler's work was interrupted by World War I, his views began to incorporate the concept of social interest as an approach to larger societal problems, such as parenting, teacher training, and child guidance. After the war, he found several child guidance clinics in Vienna and educational clinics in Austria, where he pioneered group therapy. Throughout his career, Adler frequently lectured in Europe and the United States. His approach was popular worldwide, and there were many individual psychology associations in several countries. In 1937, during one of his lecture series, Adler died of a heart attack. His daughter, Dr. Alexandra Adler, completed the series. 
His theory continued to flourish after his death and evolved through the further work of Rudolf Dreikers and many other enthusiasts. One of Dreikers' major contributions was the continuation of Adler's child guidance clinics in the United States. Individual psychology remains strong today as a theory with an enormous effect on the counseling profession. Recently, a new version of Adlerian therapy was emerged, has emerged called Adlerian Pattern Focused Therapy, an approach that includes all the basic constructs of Adler's theory. Human nature, a developmental perspective. Adler's approach to human development included exploring lifestyle, birth order, family constellation, and early recollections. He considered development as the formation of an individual's lifestyle that is unique and composed of a person's relationships with the self, others, and the universe. From the moment of birth, the child begins to construct a lifestyle out of experiences that occur in the environment based on the child's birth order. New experiences tend to be interpreted in terms of the established lifestyle rather than causing further adjustment to a fixed lifestyle. As a child develops a particular lifestyle that is unique, perceptions become increasingly selective and actions and reactions become habitual. In a person's lifestyle, values are learned from their family and become set. Adler believed that humans have attributes that are purposeful, social, subjective, and interpretive. A child interacts and becomes a shaping force in defining and redefining the family system. Many beliefs, many beliefs and perceptions are based on mistaken interpretations of the environment. Thus, lifestyle formation is an attempt to reach agreement with thoughts, feelings, and actions in the social environment. Birth order. Adler introduced birth order as a concept that guides the interpreting patterns of behavior for a child. Birth order, one of Adler's best-known concepts, is important to a child's development because it provides a template from which thoughts and behaviors are understood in a social framework. Adler constructed a framework of birth order based on the natural hierarchy created in a family that affects a child's personality. A child's parents are mandated by society on how to rear a child. Therefore, Parents are the natural leaders and role models who influence a child's development. Adler also proposed that a child or a sibling has as much or even more of an impact on family interactions than the parents. In most situations, a child's needs and behaviors affect family interactions with family relationships influencing everyone in the family. Birth order affects each child in the family differently from the only child or firstborn to the secondborn, middle, and youngest child. Family Constellation The interactions of all family members and accompanying communications create what Adler termed the family atmosphere. Family atmosphere is unique to each family constellation and is the social setting in which a child's growth and development occur and becomes the model for what is expected out of life. The relationship between the parents and a child or children is often the clearest signal of what factors constitute the family system. Parents are natural role models, and children often use them as the basis for gender-specific behaviors and interaction styles with one another and outsiders. A child, experience, a child may experience parents as loving, angry, strict, joyful, involved, protective, nurturing, or many other things. Subjective experiences can determine which attributes are incorporated into a child's set of values. One of the significant roles in the subsequent development of both the family and the child are the prevailing family values, which can include money, education, religion, and morals. An Adlerian counselor views a person's description of the family atmosphere as an indicator of development in the family system. A counselor may observe and understand the family dynamics by asking family members how they subjectively experience the atmosphere. For example, a counselor may ask parents to describe each child in the family, which may reveal the effects of a child's birth order and how the child has engaged or challenged the family. The counselor also may ask a child to describe the family, which can reveal indicators of the child's self in the family. Thus, a set of characteristics might be developed from descriptions of each family member's subjective relationships. Oh, subjective relationships to other members. Family descriptors can reveal the child's sense of belonging and knowledge of the child's relationship with family members. See sidebar 
self-awareness, only children. Susan, an only child, was worshipped by her parents and grandparents. At age 35, Susan still lived alternately with her mother or grandparents and did not have a job. Susan tried twice to find a job, but she felt that others did not understand her needs. As Susan's counselor, in what ways might your birth order and culture impact the therapeutic relationship? Many variables can affect the family constellation, influencing how the position of the only oldest, second, middle, or youngest child may be interpreted in the family constellation. One variable may be the number of years between the births of the children. Families with children born two years apart may have different dynamics than families in which children are born three or more years apart. Other factors such as gender and culture can also affect the family constellation. Another factor is if a child had major illnesses that can change the family constellation. Single parents or blended families can cause variations in the meanings found in a family constellation. As with everything in Adler's system, birth order should be understood and viewed in the context of a person's own family, community, and social universe. The birth order and the potential patterns in a family represent the point of view from which a child sees the world. A child's subjective interpretation regarding birth order, not the position itself, is what really matters, because birth position is uniquely defined by the person. Early Recollections Adler believed that early recollections are important indicators for understanding a person's development, considering the time and effort a person uses to store and recollect memories. Recollections in and of themselves are not as important as which memories are retrieved and how a person's perceptions are reflected in the choice of recollections. Early recollections are shaped by how individuals interact socially and are affected by their lifestyle, how they see themselves and their relationships. The subjective interpretation of memories can be used to indicate how a person views self and others, emphasizing a hermeneutic understanding of the life narratives, not the story itself, but the individual's interpretation of the story. Early recollections provide hints and clues that are valuable when attempting to find direction in a person striving for social interest. They are helpful in revealing what is valued and what is dangerous in life. In the counseling setting, clients' early recollections can provide information about their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in their social world. Counselors can recognize when their clients share early recollections that reactivate trauma states, as well as the steps they can take to help clients deactivate. Using early recollections is an extremely helpful tool for discerning a client's non-conscious convictions or schemas. Adlerian family play therapy can be used to incorporate basic tenets of individual psychology to help families work through their struggles. In the family constellation, exploring early recollections can be an intervention to identify a, a client's creative ways of belonging. Early recollections also can be used as metaphors that can be applied to current life scenarios to promote client understanding. Sidebar 5.2, Counseling Services middle children. Christopher is the middle child in a single parent family raised by his mother. He has one older and one younger sibling, and all three children were born without within a span of four years. Christopher believes his oldest and youngest siblings align together and are against him. During his first year of middle school, his grades declined and he was put on academic probation. He is sensitive to criticism, easily angered, and has a poor me attitude. How does being in a single parent family affect Christopher? In what ways might the alignment of the oldest and youngest child in family atmosphere influence Christopher? Major constructs. Adler's theory is comprehensive and addresses both normal and abnormal development using simple and understandable constructs. He used case studies, anecdotal information, and classroom demonstrations with clients as the source of his theory. Individual psychology was accepted by professionals and laypeople because it is common sense interrelatedness and integration of constructs. Adler viewed a person as a complete being who creates self rather than having the self be created by consciousness outside of one's control, as Freud proposed. Adler valued individuality. In his view, the self consists of social aspects that begin with inferiority feelings, which are understood to function as spurs to achievement, providing the impetus for human striving, away from feelings of inferiority, in movement toward a perceived position of superiority. The greater and more urgent the inferiority feeling, 
the greater the compensation must be, leading to overcompensation, an exaggerated goal of personal superiority or success, movement in pursuit of goals from below to above, from a felt inferiority toward a fictional superiority. A person is a complete and integrated individual with the creative power to interpret experiences and manifest a lifestyle that emphasizes growth. Social embeddedness and responsibility in life are important, as well as how a person strives for success through self-reflection. Adler believed that teleology is, used as, is useful to counselors as it illuminates the dynamic action of both functional and dysfunctional behavior by observing the movement of the client's problematic or symptomatic behavior. Counselors can readily discern the purpose it serves, help the client see it as well, and support a more accurate and functional orientation. The combination of self-direction and social connectedness is central to individual psychology. How a person is in the world results from a social creation as much as genetic design. Social influence is so strong that almost nothing is more important than a person's social world. Problems are socially created because of the conflicts that arise as an individual performs the three life tasks of work, community, and love. According to Adler, inferiority feelings are normal and can be used as a source of striving to overcome such feelings. They are normal reactions and awareness that people are not able to function in a way that they wish. Inferiority experiences motivate a person to strive for the future and work toward a purpose in life rather than escape the past. Adler believed that all human behavior is driven by goals and the ultimate desire to be superior, which is motivated by feelings of inferiority. A person is a social being who has the capacity to interpret and influence events. One needs other people and is needed by others. A person can choose and act in a way that will lead to a goal. The world is viewed uniquely from a subjective reality that is defined as a person's feelings, beliefs, values, and understandings of the world. Adler believed that a person who is connected to others and meets the three life tasks of work, community, and love has a healthy view of life and contributes to social interest, whereas a person who is ill-equipped or incapable of meeting the three life tasks has a negative view of others in society. Adler believed in the unique creative power of an individual. However, for instructive purposes, he suggested four social interest types. A. Ruling. B. Getting. C avoidant, and D, useful. People from the first three types are at least partly unprepared to meet life's demands. At various levels, these types of people do not cooperate with others or contribute to society, and they may experience addictions, neurosis, psychosis, or other issues. The ruling type attempts to dominate others, the getting type assumes that everyone will take care of them, and the avoidant type avoids problems. Each type creates dysfunction in the family and society. A person in the fourth type cooperates, contributes, and is useful and active in society. Adler believed that these personality types varied from active to passive, with the most effective being active towards social interest. He thought that early recollections were a way to assess clients' social interest type and how they negatively or positively approached social interest. Passive clients safeguard as a means of protecting themselves from feeling inferior. Clients who are overly active but in a misdirected way by being discouraged do not align with others socially, which leads to their inability to be successful. Through early recollections, clients who are useful and tend toward active or passive social interest see sight. Wait, what? Through early recollections, clients who are useful and tend toward active or passive social interest experience insight. Adler's Human Personality Theory Adler refined his theory through A. Explanation of inferior feeling B. Understanding of inferiority and C. Social interest from 1907 to 1912, Adler's work focused on organ inferiority as a basic concept of his theory. He viewed a person as having a weak part of the self and a strong part. A person responds to organic inferiorities by reaching for success, making up for a deficiency in some way with another physical attribute. The organ that is inferior can be strengthened or other organs can be overdeveloped for the inferior organ. A person can compensate by developing certain skills or traits as a source of the person's striving. Development and society push a person toward overcoming inferiority and learning how to do what the others do. 
Sidebar 5.3. Four basic types of individuals. One, ruling. These individuals seek domination over others. Two, getting. These individuals assume that others will take care of them. Three, avoidant. These individuals seek to avoid problems. Four, useful. These individuals cooperate, are socially useful, and actively contribute to the world. The first three types of individuals are unprepared to meet life's demands. They may experience addictions, neurosis, psychosis, or other issues. The socially useful individual finds meaningfulness in society and is usually connected and is socially connected to others. Adler also viewed a person as holistic, a piece of the larger system, developing from birth to living in a family, culture, community, and the world. Holism incorporates individuals' basic need to belong, a need that leads individuals to contribute and thus develop the quality of social interest. A person's goal orientation includes lifestyle as well as immediate goals. A person thinks, feels, and acts based on the unconscious insofar as it is so as it is unrecognized or not yet understood, and has a subjective meaning of experiences. Adler believed that individuals have three tasks that are universal, interrelated, and interdependent to survive, to grow, and to procreate. Individuals achieve these tasks through their love and bonding that form social interest and community. The solutions to all three require cooperation, caring, and empathy, courage, contribution, connection, capability, and counting, self-worth, the seven C's. Lifestyle allows a person to choose emotions and achieve immediate or lifestyle goals that are influenced by hereditary and social factors, as well as one's creative power and subjective perspectives. Millerin said that emotions are not something that control the individual. Rather, the individual learns to use emotions to pursue goals. For clients with post-traumatic stress disorder with symptoms such as nightmares, Hegertas applied Adler's concept of holism, in which various components work together to form the whole, and dysfunction in one of these components can therefore affect the whole and cause a reshifting of its operation. From 1912 to 1960, Adler developed a framework to understand inferiority feelings as generators for striving to the future. In his publication, The Neurotic Constitution, Adler, Adler was influenced by Han Weyhinger's definition of fictions. Adler believed that people react as if they understand the world and that everything influences the present. Also, a fictional goal is the truth that is always beyond a person's interpretation as well as partial or biased truths that are created as fictions used in life. People react as if understanding the world and as if everything seen and experienced in the world influence their reactions and behaviors in the present. Fictions direct people in the present to overcome inferiority feelings and motivate them toward the future. Inferiority feelings do not have to restrict people, but rather can assist them in understanding how they affect their decision making, such as career choices. When people are aware of their guiding fictions, they use their fictions to construct a career. An example of a person's fiction might be that life is fair and work will reflect, will reflect that fairness which contradicts reality because not everything in life is fair and mistakes and bad things happen at work although this fiction can have value in everyday life. Adler believed that a person develops fictions as a protection to handle the social world. Fictions allow for a future-oriented momentum toward the goal of perfection rather than past-oriented responses to inferiority. A person chooses how to react and interpret a situation in light of a fictional goal to help construct choices. Adler viewed the unity of a person in terms of the fictional finalism, person deal, which directs each person's movement through the world. In the striving for superiority, fictions can result in flawed thoughts in which a person recognizes vulnerability and experiences inferiority. Fictions also direct a person to overcome inferiority feelings and motivate the person, and inferiority, and inferiority feelings assist a person in understanding how dis fictions affect a decision. Social interest. From 1916 until his death in 1937, Adler used the German term 
Gemensche Volkgefühl to refer <laughs> to refer to a person's social interest or community feeling. Adler defined Gemensche Volkgefühl or <laughs> or social interest as the goal of belonging to a social group and as a person's innate drive to cooperate and contribute with others for the common good. A person strives to overcome inferiority feelings through self-improvement, self-completion, and contribution and interconnection to others in society. Social interest is linked to empathy with others and is an innate potential. As social interests build, as social interest builds, a person becomes healthy and socially active in life and inferiority feelings lessen. A person develops social interest in the absence of self-centeredness and neurosis. Community feeling may help an individual focus on others in a positive manner and by doing so concentrate less on one's own issues. Hmm. The focus for counselors who understand clients through social interest is not on the counselor's needs or fears, but on how to best help the client. However, counselors who are discouraged will struggle with social interest. This is evident for counselors in training. Individuals are social decision makers who act in a manner consistent with the subjective meaning of their lifestyle. In a person's lifestyle, the goal is to belong to a social group or culture. As demonstrated in Adler's concept of Gemeinschaft der Forschungsgefühl, Cross-cultural, I apologize, reader, cross-cultural considerations are inherent in this theory. Adler was ahead of his time in recognizing the destructive influence of some social-cultural interactions. He saw a person's culture as derived from the person's subjective view of life. Culture is the person's interpretation of a social setting and is a strong indicator for their mental health and how the person views self, lifestyle, and community. From a cultural perspective, social interest includes factors such as helping, participating, cooperating, empathizing, and contributing. Culture becomes a mediating factor that provides for the reconciliation of the individual's internal, personal, subjective environment or frame of reference with the demands of the person's external, common, objective environment or surroundings. A balance exists with these factors in which a person can achieve goals in ways that also improve the welfare of others. Mellorin et al. explained Adler's social interest in terms of three different aspects, of it being an aptitude or an aid potentially. Backing up, see sidebar 5.4. Case study. Benita is a 30-year-old woman who is married with no children. Her parents were both born in India and then moved to the United States, where they started their family. Benita's parents arranged her marriage, which she describes as lonely. She is employed full-time and often spends her weekends visiting her parents, who live three hours away while her husband remains at homes. What cross-cultural considerations are present? How would you use social interest in your work with Benita? Millerin explained Adler's social interest in terms of three different aspects, of its being an aptitude or innate potentiality, of its being a set of abilities, and of its being a generalized attitude. Innate aptitude influences the striving toward social interest and must be developed into abilities, especially cooperating and contributing to others so that a person can interconnect with others. Parents, guardians, and teachers should cultivate social interest in children from an early age by giving tasks that help children learn how to cooperate and contribute to society. Parents and teachers should role model how to be useful so that children can generalize their experiences to develop social interest. If social interest develops, a person recognizes that the welfare of others is important. At the effective level, a person will be empathetic, a person will be empathic, and have a deep belonging to others. At the behavioral level, thoughts and feelings are acted on, which leads to striving towards self-development as well as cooperating and contributing to others, resulting in a person's contribution to society. The core of Adler's theory envisioned a person as capable of profound cooperation in society and striving for self-improvement and self-completion. Thus, the concept of social interest is both personally fulfilling and beneficial to others. Social interest denotes a recognition and acceptance of the interconnectedness of all people in positive ways. Greater personal development increases the ability to connect positively with others, learn from others, and develop which are all key to good mental health. If children learn social interest, they will be mentally healthy throughout life and able to handle the life tasks of work and community. 
In contrast, a discouraging family and unhealthy social setting will create inferiority feelings resulting in discouragement and an egocentric child. Adler taught that the task of mental health professionals is, ultimately, to help clients live meaningful lives wherein they sense of their own value by contributing to the lives of others and to the communities in which they live. Likewise, he expected those active in the profession to care not only for clients but for the community and the world as well. Adler held strong beliefs about the importance of social equity and understanding the marginalization of certain groups. He regarded equality between groups as necessary for developing social interest in a community for all members to feel a sense of belonging. The emphasis on a person's subjective view of the world supports respect for the values and cultures of others. Bala described how social responsibility contributes to individuals living as if each person is making a contribution to the ideal of humanity perfected, which is to live in and seek justice for all. Adler believed in equality, social justice, civil rights, mutual respect, advancement of social values, and the importance of nurturing feelings of belonging in everyone. Applications. Overall, the Adlerian counseling process is designed to assist a client with growth. Adler proposed three phases of counseling. One, understanding the client. Two, explaining the client's behavior to him or her in a way that makes sense. And three, strengthening social interest. The Adlerian counseling process varies widely based on Adler's basic assumption that each client is unique. See sidebar 5.5. Four stages of the Adlerian counseling process. The overall counseling process is designed to assist a client with growth. One, relationship. The focus is on building the therapeutic relationship. Two, investigation. The therapist's focus is on understanding the client. Three, interpretation. The therapist's focus is on explaining client behavior in a way that makes sense to the client. Four, reorientation. The therapist's focus is on strengthening client's social interest. Adler did not propose specific interventions because of the uniqueness of each client. Instead, he emphasized counselor intuition and creativity. Adler used case conceptualization as a method of how to apply individual psychology. Actual examples of counseling interventions of Adler's therapeutic style are limited. Counselors are encouraged to read Adler's cases to familiarize themselves with his many applications from an experiential learning approach. Counselor creativity and intuitiveness are imperative, and the array of intervention strategies is Adler's hallmark. Adler count, Adlerian counselors draw from a range of techniques to meet the needs of a client. Goals of counseling and psychotherapy. The adaptability of Adler's theory is seen as one of its greatest strengths, and the, and the emphasis on specific goal types can be beneficial when helping clients. Although the overall goal of counseling is encouraging social interest, clients may begin counseling wanting instant relief or possibly continuing what they are doing without feeling uncomfortable. The goal of therapy is not, necessary fulfill, is not necessarily fulfilling these expectations. Rather, a counselor assists a client by distinguishing between life goals that account for the client's unique lifestyle and more immediate goals that account for everyday behaviors. The central aim of counseling is to help a client identify and understand mistaken beliefs about self, others, and life, and make changes in those beliefs so that the client can participate more fully in a social world. The beginning process of goal setting assists a client in developing behaviors and beliefs characterized by actions that contribute to social interest. A counselor works with clients to help them be useful in life and develop a sense of belonging to society in terms of their perceptions of self and others to spur clients toward achievement in their lifestyle. A person who feels like a part of a community will have fewer inferiority feelings. In the beginning, a counselor helps clients address the following. Develop a plan of what is wanted, how to plan to get what is wanted, what is stopping the attainment of goals, how mistaken beliefs and behaviors can be changed into constructive thoughts and actions, and how the use of strengths can help them achieve a synchronization of goals and provide for a healthy client-counselor relationship. The process of change. Early in the counseling process, Adlerian counselors develop a relationship with clients through empathy and encouragement. Encouragement is the most powerful intervention counselors can provide when they help a client to transform beliefs and inspire courage to grow. Clients grow by gaining insight and using that insight to take steps that result in healthy relationships. Growth is not possible unless clients are willing to change their mistaken beliefs. 
counselors assist clients in recognizing mistaken beliefs by questioning and pointing out certain unattractive behaviors of clients. Through counselor questioning and examining, clients make a connection between mistaken beliefs and problems. Counselors assist clients to evaluate their motivations for behaviors and any inferiority feelings as a result of the behaviors. Clients may continue to behave in the same manner. However, the behaviors become less attractive, making clients aware that they have the power to change behaviors. Thus, Adlerian counseling rests in the counselor-client collaborative and encouraging relationship of mutual respect that identifies, explores, and evaluates mistaken beliefs in a client's lifestyle. Adler saw confrontation as an important part of an encouragement. Millerin et al. stated that confrontation is frequently used as a way of holding the mistaken goals and beliefs up in front of the client as with a mirror. Confrontation presents an opportunity to make immediate change in beliefs, behaviors, or mood. Confrontation is followed by a reorientation of the client toward what will work. The main aim of counseling is to develop the client's sense of belonging and empower the client to change behaviors and beliefs by increasing the client's self-awareness and modifying goals to accomplish change. Adler believed that encouraging a client to function more effectively is central to the counseling process. Rather than focusing on major problems and mistakes, the counselor focuses on the client's strengths while still addressing mistaken beliefs and behavior. The use of an Adlerian approach is also applicable to promoting change and growth in the context of counseling supervision. Bornschwar Boswell et al. proposed that supervisors use encouragement and catching oneself with counseling supervisees. Bornschwa Boswell and colleagues viewed the encouragement of supervisees as a top priority in initial supervision sessions to facilitate an egalitarian and collaborative super supervisory relationship. And the intervention of catching oneself helps supervisees monitor the behaviors that are not productive in a counseling relationship, that is, countertransference, which can allow for more effective counseling. Adlerian counselors can draw from a wide range of traditional and contemporary techniques, which also offer counselors the framework to infuse cultural issues when working with clients. Sperry noted four therapeutic techniques that are reflected in an Adlerian therapeutic strategy. Push-button technique, acting as if, reflecting as if, and task setting. These are effective interventions in which the therapist guides the client in reframing or replacing maladaptive behaviors, thoughts, and patterns with healthier ones. Lifestyle analysis. A key function of counselors is to make a comprehensive analysis of the client's lifestyle, which requires mutual trust and respect. Counselors gather information through the questioning of a client's lifestyle. Johnson Migalski recommended expansion of lifestyle assessments that include sociocultural factors and diversity contexts. According to Taylor et al., contemporary Adlerian theorists and researchers have demonstrated renewed interest in personality priorities as a useful tool for gaining insight into a person's lifestyle, as well as their family, life goals, and beliefs. The following components are used in a lifestyle analysis. See sidebar 5.6. Sidebar 5.6, Lifestyle Analysis. A lifestyle analysis examines what successes, failures, beliefs, life goals, and personality priorities the client has and includes the following. Family atmosphere and values. What values and cultural experiences did the client experience in the family? Early development experiences and recollections. How do early developmental experiences affect the client's experience of life goals, lifestyle, social interest, and inferiority feelings? Encouragement. What inferiority feelings does the client have and in what ways can the therapist encourage the client to increase client social interest? Family atmosphere and values. The family atmosphere is the coming together of everyone in the family and the subsequent patterns of family communication. Because the family is an interactive system, a key to assessing a family is asking each member what the family client is like. The family values depend on the unique family atmosphere, and parents are the role models for family values. Values play a significant role in a person's life. A counselor may assess a client's values by asking, what did your parents believe was important in the family? Adler believed that psychological problems that can occur in children's lifestyle patterns are caused by their underdeveloped social interest in the family constellation and community. When children's needs are not met through social interest, they may have misguided goals and act out. The family constellation and the relationships in the family affect gender role expectations. 
Parents and siblings are role models for children and affect how children experience and communicate in the world through their gender. Assessing gender roles includes exploring a client's evaluation of the conditions in the family related to birth order, gender of siblings, and parental relationships. Family dynamics, including parental styles, including parenting styles, and position of the family based on a child's gender are several ways in which a counselor can view the role of a child in the family. Early development ex experiences and recollections. Early experiences are critical to a person's development and recollections shed insight into current beliefs and emotions about family and social settings such as school or work. Early memories embody a client's belief about self and the client's social world that contain recollec recollections of the client's inferiority feelings, life goals, and lifestyle. Metaphors based on early recollections can help counselors evaluate a client's strategies and examine how effective these strategies are. Encouragement. Encouragement is one of the most powerful strategies available for changing a client's beliefs and stimulating courage. It is central to all processes of Adlerian counseling. Counselors must encourage clients by awakening their social interest. Counselors consider the counseling relationship to be one to be one between equals that is based on cooperation, trust, and respect. Encouragement helps to build rapport and maximizes the counselor-client relationship. It is it assists clients in understanding dysfunctional behaviors and overcoming inferiority by generating alternatives and using strengths and resources. Encouragement is often mistaken as praise, but praise is external control. Praise focuses on outcomes and is conditional. Encouragement focuses on effort or improvement rather than results. By developing a relationship based on encouragement with a client, counselors provide a basic form of social interest which the client can transfer to other relationships. Clients do not need help with their problems. They seek help with how they are attempting to resolve their problems. Clients do not need help with their problems. They seek help with how they are attempting to resolve their problems. Contemporary applications. Various contemporary applications of Adlerian theory include working with trauma, play therapy, new interventions such as Socratic questioning, and the emphasis on culture. Recent techniques have applied a traditional Adlerian framework using a stage orientation to trauma based in a holistic, biopsychosocial bio view inclusive of social embeddedness, holism, purpose behavior, and subjectivity and creativity. Other techniques use Adlerian theory when addressing post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms through clients' social connectedness and lifestyle. Two examples of interventions founded in the original Adlerian theory and used by contemporary Adlerian counselors include Socratic questioning and play therapy. Socratic questioning is an Adlerian strategy used to lead clients into insight and cognitive change through a series of questions. It embodies the relationship of equals using an encouraging style. Counselors use questions to gather information, clarify meaning, and verify feelings. More penetrating, leading questions uncover the deeper understanding of a client's private logic and goals. A counselor also explores both short and long-term consequences of a, of a client's thinking, feeling, and acting. New ideas are generated, examined, and evaluated to help a client take steps toward a new direction. The results of this exploration are constantly reviewed and used to evaluate the impact of the client's new direction. The client is responsible for change. The role of the counselor is that of an assistant, not a superior expert. Another contemporary application is Adlerian play therapy, which is regarded as one of the most practical and effective approaches to reduce disruptive behaviors in children. Cotman, the developer of ADPT, stated that it is designed for use by helping professionals with children who are experiencing emotional, behavioral, or academic problems. In a study by Evans, ADPT was indicated as effective with children who displayed trauma symptoms when implemented by a trained counselor. Meany Wallen reported on 10 research studies conducted between 2015 and 2019 that ADPT is a promising approach for helping children with social and emotional difficulties. Specifically, ADPT was successful in reducing disruptive classroom behaviors and increasing children's classroom on task time. In addition to using ADPT in trauma counseling, Ashby et al. proposed combining ADPT with adventure therapy and outlined specific techniques that complement the stages of play therapy, such as de-inhibitors and trust and empathy exercises. 
Contemporary Adlerian counselors should recognize and work with clients' perceptions of their social and cultural world. As noted by the American Counseling Association and the Association for Multicultural Counseling and Development, counselors should be skilled in recognizing how culture influences their own worldviews as well as clients' worldviews, including the roles of social oppression, racism, elitism, and sexism. Counselors also must develop interventions appropriate to each client's needs and cultures. As suggested by the ACA and AMCD, as well as Lee's book, Counseling for Social Justice, counselors should work toward understanding a client's unique subjective perceptions of the world based on the possibility of social exclusion, a process by which certain individuals and groups, example, Individuals with disabilities, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender persons, women, certain ethnic and racial groups, are unable to access things such as housing, employment, health care, and social engagement that are available to others. These, exclusion and, these exclusions and prejudices are inappropriately imposed on people and limit them from fully participating socially. Brief Intervention Strategies the creative freedom inherent in Adlerian counseling demands a variety of strategies that suit the uniqueness of each client and capture the therapeutic opportunities the client presents with. Brief strategies can be used to assist clients with missed developmental experiences that are affecting their lives as adults. Some clients need additional, specific interventions to access or change thoughts and feelings. Specific strategies used at any one time depend on the counseling direction that is beneficial for a client, such as assessment of family dynamics, mistaken beliefs, social interest, and typologies, evaluation of early recollections, use of push buttons, acting and reflecting as if, and task setting, and examination metaphors. Clients with Serious Mental Health Issues Adler preferred the term discouraged as opposed to labels such as pathological or mentally ill when referring to a person. He believed that disturbances or neurosis occur because of an exaggerated inferiority feeling or an insufficient feeling of community. Under these circumstances, a person may experience failure in situations that seem unattainable and may become discouraged. When people are discouraged, they first resort to fictional means to mask rather than overcome inferiority feelings, attempting to bolster feelings of self. Eventually, views clash with reality and create difficulties in a person's social settings, which may lead to psychological disturbances. Symptoms such as anxiety, phobias, or depression were not Adler's main focus in understanding difficulties, but he did believe that a person's symptoms were important. Adler preferred the perspective that the role of the counselor is not primarily to treat mental diseases, but rather to discover the fictions in a client's lifestyle and thus lead a client to greater social interest. Even though Adler was not a proponent of diagnosis, today's managed care requires the use of diagnosis based on the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition. Stein pointed out that the heart of a successful treatment plan begins with a diagnosis based on using all of Adler's constructs that are appropriate to the case, customizing our diagnosis and treatment for the unique needs of each individual. For example, with a depression diagnosis, an Adlerian-focused counselor views an individual as developing a self-perpetuating pattern of behaving and relating that underlies their depression and is influenced by biological loading and family history, as well as systemic and cultural considerations. When clients are helped to contrast the actual and hurtful outcome or effect of their thinking and behavior with a more desirable and helpful outcome in the context of a caring and collaborative therapeutic relationship, change in the form of a shift to a more adaptive pattern can occur. Even with the push by managed care, another, other diagnoses might suit individual psychology include social, emotional, and behavioral issues with children and adolescents, depression and trauma, and post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms in adults. Adler believed that clients are unique in their social cultural worlds, necessitating a match between counseling strategies and techniques. Furthermore, Adler's theory is well matched with social justice issues such as the mental health concerns of marginalized or diverse individuals or groups of individuals. Adlerian counselors should seek to develop an awareness of social equality for all humans with the sense that everyone has equal rights. With the rise of social justice issues, cultural awareness, and sensitivity in counseling, the ACA and AMCD require that counselors move beyond the traditional theory orientation as suggested by Adler to focus on education, prevention, and advocacy. 
Supporting Research and Limitations. Overview. The supporting research for Adler's theory and the limitations of assessing Adlerian concepts and techniques are described in this section. There are two major areas of limitations noted. Supporting research. Adler's theory is one of the most simplistic and application-oriented theories available. As suggested by Adler, the evidence for his theory is based on his case studies. Many of his writings include excerpts from his studies. Empirical research on Adlerian theory began in the 1960s and continues today. Eckstein provided an extensive exploration of 151 empirical-based articles on static statically significant birth order differences. Findings from a narrative study by Mansiger on 15 individuals who completed an Adlerian certification program indicated that their Adlerian artistic ability comes from profound self-knowledge, creative spontaneity, rhetorical persuasiveness, and the courage to guess expansively which aligns with the core foundation of Adlerian theory. A second research study by Alizida Al on social interest indicated significant differences in two groups of 9 to 12-year-olds, children with oppositional defiant disorder and a comparison group. Furthermore, using Adler's term family constellations, Hunger et al. found evidence for the mid- and long-term efficacy of family constellation seminars and improvement of psychological functioning. For early recollections, Johnson, Migalski et al. found differences in students' anxiety and early recollections. In addition to recent research, several assessments based on Adlerian concepts include Crandall's Social Interest Scale, Eckstein's Lifestyle Self-Assessment, and, and Rules Early Recollections Questionnaire. Also, various natural and international organizations promote Adler's research, including the Adler University. Limitations. Although Adlerian counseling is viewed as a basic approach that is geared toward the lay person as well as counselors, some researchers and practitioners frequently criticize his theory. Adler's theory has been considered as lacking a strategy that fully deals with a vast array of psychological issues clients bring to counseling. A frequently discussed limitation of his theory is the lack of empirical evidence. Adlerian therapy is not currently included on American Psychological Association's list of research-supported treatments or the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration's National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices. Managed care providers require counselors to use techniques with measurable outcomes, but few concepts in Adler's theory have been measured. Adler's concepts are not based on quantifiable physical and behavioral actions with inferiority feelings and social interest as examples of unquantifiable phenomena. Despite these limitations, Adlerian therapy has been regarded as ahead of its time for contributing key concepts to theories developed later, such as view viewing clients contextually and assessing for life patterns and purpose behaviors. The case of Clarita, an Adlerian approach. The three principles discussed in this chapter, goal orientation, social interest, and holism, are used to conceptualize the case of Clarita that is framed in the phrases of Adlerian counseling, relationship, investigation, interpretation, and reorientation. In the first phase, the counselor should establish an empathic and encouraging relationship with Clarita. Encouragement is one of the most important techniques to empower Clarita to make changes in her lifestyle. The investigation phase involves the counselor exploring Clarita's subjective perceptions of her relationship, family, and lifestyle. A lifestyle analysis can assist in the process. The counselor uses open-ended questions to generate Clarita's responses. In the analysis, Clarita, open, Clarita reports that she is a teacher with current challenges at work because of excessive absences. Although she excelled academically in college, has been a good teacher, and is involved in her family and community, Clarita states that she is depressed, is feeling lonely and frightened, and has crying spells and nightmares, difficulty sleeping, unintended weight loss, and thoughts of suicide. She reports that her relationship with her family is strained because of her divorce. Her isolation from her family is compounded by her forced re relocation to Florida as a result of the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Although she reports meeting new friends she could rely on initially, Clarita now feels disconnected and has withdrawn socially, with the depression keeping her isolated. When asked about her childhood, she states that her family was very close. However, as the oldest child, she had many responsibilities in her Latinx culture and has seen as a role model for her siblings while her parents worked. Clarita states she is very, depe very dependable, hardworking, and conscientious, all traits that fit with Adler's characteristics of an older child, of the oldest child. 
As a result of her childhood development, she is sensitive to her most recent challenges with her relationships and divorce. Clarita may have developed a, a discouraged lifestyle and may feel that she is not as competent as her family expects. Her role and responsibilities in her family are the roots of her inferiority feelings. Remembering her childhood, Clarita believes that her parents' requirement that she take care of their siblings was an indication of how much they loved her. She remembers an incident when she was a child and unable to attend a school activity because she was told she needed to care for her siblings. After that experience, Clarita always was responsible so that her parents would love her. That thought continued into her adulthood. However, when she relocated for college far away from home and married someone outside of her Latinx culture and religion, her family disapproved, which resulted in a rift in their relationship. Based on the counselor's lifestyle analysis of Clarita and consistent with her story, Clarita is discovered is discouraged and despondent about her lack of connectedness in her relationships with family and friends. Although her unconscious goal is to be free of all her past responsibilities as a child as well as her present responsibilities, Clarita also needs connection to her family and friends. Clarita reports of dreaming about boxes and crates that turn into figures, which reflect her present challenges. As Adler suggested, dreams are expressions of one's lifestyle, and these are thus reflections of Clarita's daytime feelings and her problems. The objects in her dreams represent all the people in her life needing something from her, and her feelings of being overwhelmed, lonely, and unable to connect socially. Just as Clarita escaped to college and disobeyed her parents, she currently wants to escape again from all her responsibilities. In the interpretation phase, Clarita appears to believe that others need more than she can give. Her mistaken belief might be that she must be responsible for everyone or she will not be loved. This, seem, this theme seems to run consistently through Clarita's life, making her sensitive to her parents' and siblings' demands, which is compounded by her husband's abuse during their marriage. From an Adlerian perspective, Clarita's solution to her situation is to be depressed, fearful, overwhelmed, and unable to cope. Clarita's private logic dictates that in her family culture, she should be responsible for everyone and everything. Her scheme of, a, of, a, of apperception of sharply divides her need to be responsible from her need to take care of herself. Characteristics of an oldest child can be seen in Clarita's relationships and particularly how she devoted herself to her students. She feels responsible for everyone. Clarita striving her for superiority and lifestyle is expressed in her being a responsible daughter, mother, and teacher so that her parents and others will love her. Through the use of Socratic questioning by her counselor, Clarita could become aware of her need to take care of everyone and everything. A counselor's use of guided images may elicit Clarita's first recollections of being responsible for others as a child. After experiencing a gradual series of missing developmental experiences through these techniques, Clarita can become open to having relationships without always having to be responsible for others. She may then redirect her striving for social interests that involves cooperation and may begin to realize that she does not always have to be the one who must contribute. She could work toward having more sharing and healthy relationships. During the orientation phase, during the reorientation phase, counseling with Carita will involve encouragement as well as confrontation based on a collaborative relationship to illuminate her mistaken belief that she is responsible for everyone. Clarita will need to examine her own lifestyle through discussion and personal evaluation of clues embedded in her earliest recollections. The counselor can educate, educate Clarita that inferiority feelings are normal and can be used as fuel for making changes in her life. The counselor can work with Clarita to improve her self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth while encouraging her to have healthy boundaries. Once she has been empowered to be aware of her past choices, Clarita can then be empowered to make different choices. Her strengths include her strong cultural ties, new supportive friends, as well as her education and her ability to work and support herself and her children. Gradually, Clarita can learn how much her responsibility crusade drove her life and what she had missed as a child and as an adult. Goal 1. Clarita will explore her family history, family constellation, and birth order, and related early memories. The counselor will conduct a lifestyle analysis to explore Clarita's history and to connect her current thoughts, feelings, and choices. Goal 2. Clarita will gain insight into her lifestyle, goals, and patterns. The counselor will use encouragement, confrontation, and interventions such as sp spitting in the client's soup to help Clarita identify her mistaken thoughts and beliefs. For example, a counselor could use spitting in the client's soup by asking Clarita how she is benefiting from her emotions and behaviors by escaping her responsibilities. Clarita will identify goal three. Clarita will identify goals for work, 
community and love to change her current lifestyle to strive towards social interest and holism. The counselor will help Clarita identify her strengths that will contribute to developing courage to act toward change.